So this is our uh, December 9th uh, Conway Select Board meeting. Uh, being recorded by FCAT for viewing in the future. And we're hoping we may get live TV out of this building before too long. We will see. Mm -hmm. uh, so the minutes, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. I thought they looked great. So can I have a motion to yes. accept the minutes? Yes. Yes? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Pass the minutes. Yes. Minutes of last week. Vendor warrants. We have three vendor warrants. Uh, we have a vendor warrant for 239539 a payroll warrant for 140720 and a payroll deduction warrant for 32598 So can we have a motion? Yes, I reviewed them and there. I signed sign them. them? Yes, motion to approve All them. in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Good. Meetings attended by the select board members. Yes, yes, wonderful negotiating session with our union last Thursday. Um, afternoon stretching in the evening and then uh, had the uh, uh, Frontier Capital Improvement Committee this afternoon. Any progress on the negotiation? Um, yes, I would say that there is progress. Um, and, you know, it's still can't tell whether it's light at the end of the tunnel or the train coming right at me. So uh -oh. okay. one of, it's one or the other, though. Still going into mediation? We are. Yeah. We are in mediation. Yeah. And But we do have another, we did schedule another two mediation sessions with the current state mediator for January. Uh, actually, late January, unfortunately. But... So I had two cable meetings this last week. We had a cable public hearing. It's uh, one of the requirements for renewing our franchise agreement. FCAT was there both, both uh, filming it for us and talking about all the great things that FCAT does uh, for cable. And then on Friday morning, we had a cable advisory meeting where we then met back with Comcast again. And we're hammering out how much capital we might be able to get from Comcast to fund new cameras and expanding uh, live pro live filming uh, in some of the buildings in Conway. So, uh, so we're, we're negotiating numbers with Comcast, and then they have to take it up to their management and see what they can do. And yeah, so when we had a uh, that would be wonderful. Any improvement in the public services offered would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, and I'd like to have live TV. We could we could run a line over from the town hall and yeah. have that come in here too. Uh, and right now we do we do to some extent we do live TV in the form of a bulletin board upstairs that Ron Hawks programs, so people can put a put an event on a Conway event. But it's just a bulletin board turned, you know, channel 15, and you look at our Conway bulletin board. Um, but but. So technically, that could become a live channel. For so us. the school was wired with the high speed for, for the high speed for this purpose. For one, this was one of the things that they had in mind. Is, is the town hall wired for that as well? Uh, um, well, the town hall, no, the town hall is not wired at all for it. Do we have the bandwidth? Oh yeah, to we do. do sure. Okay, but what, what we are hoping is to buy some new cameras for the school, cameras and tripods, things like that, so the school could record things. Okay. Public comments. I don't see a crowd of public here. So we have some old business. We have some license uh, license renewals. So the, the license that we have today are two for uh, Everett Veitz, uh used car lot. Uh, he, he has a, a class two and a class three uh, selling secondhand motor vehicles and he does maintenance. He does. Yeah. <coughs> so um, he has fixed my vehicles many times. So uh, I guess we should we should vote to sign these. So can I have the a motion, motion to, to sign to, the bike warrants? Uh, uh, the bike sign uh, renewals. Them. Yep. And uh, so all in favor? Yes. Me too.
So in the agenda, we also had one for the mags, but it, we don't have it completed yet. And uh, okay. other special town meeting related matters. Tom, do we have any of them? Uh, no update. Uh, I did uh, work with you. One, one minor thing I did work with uh, Bob after hearing that uh, there was concern about the pollinator field community preservation committee uh, proposal that that uh, someone wanted to be sure that that was vetted by the conservation commission so we're now doing that we're now making the motion um, uh, contingent on right. conservation commission review what about the changes to the the fire chief's thing there aren't any changes to the article or the motion. Um, How about our and, and I'll, I'll I'll get to the other thing during the update, but I will I'll, I'll mention that the uh, there was late breaking news from town council who's advising against passing it until we have our bylaw revisions and our personnel policy revisions that we can do at the same time because we have two conflicting we would have two conflicting sets of rules in the town. And so he's saying, don't have two. So, given what town council is telling us, could rules. we re vote our recommendation? Uh, you could. Um, the uh, or could you just make it explicitly advisory? Just, I mean, the, the, the thing is that tonight there's only 10 articles or whatever, and you could actually have a discussion about it. Whereas, if it, six months from now, it's going to be packed into a whole bunch of things and. Maybe get the sense of the town tonight. But but I wouldn't have voted to recommend it if I had known that our council. Well, here's my thing. So say, well, so and, and doesn't that news recommend. Came in. My, yeah. my my thing is when when I I, I took a look at this and the, what it says isn't what we had been told it says, and so I don't know. Like, do you know? It's I'm not going to like do a pop. There the the difference between the it's not strong chief. It's not it's not in the law at all, and it shouldn't be called that. Um, and what the the law that our chief actually had, it, it's been changed since then. So I mean, he was talking about 42A versus 42B. There's no more 42B now. It's 42 versus 42A. So if we would have voted the way he wanted to, which was to adopt 42A, that would have actually gotten us the weak chief. The the strong chief is now 42, not 42A. Well, I but, I handed out the uh, the the. But the, the section, the relevant the, section. The most important thing is what the actual change would be, which wasn't really explicitly mentioned by anybody and isn't even in the statute. It's in all the cases that decide what the statute says. And that is the difference is between an employee at will and an employee that can only be discharged for cause. Yes, that and, was one of the things we found out from town council. So, and, and, and he, he also, um, well, in, in a practical sense, um, uh, it's it's very difficult to dismiss a, an employee with no liability um, at will. It, you really always want to do it for cause in a practical sense. But yes, it would make that a technical distinction. That's one of the things that we would have to change between the bylaws and the policies uh, if we adopted this this measure. But that there's more to it than even that because even within even if say. Um, you decide that it's decided that the that you want to make that position for this person uh, a for cause position. Um, there still has to be the issues surrounding the by like you're you're allowed to make that just like a professional contract with a school employee. You're allowed to make that a three year ticker, so that a contract would be is good for three years during that time period. It's a for cause determination, but when the contract lapses and get then just like a school employee, that's when you can decide not to, not to extend or you know agree on another contract for no reason or any reason at all. So and and all the, the that you have to decide whether you want it to look like that or whether it's you know a lifetime not a lifetime duration but you know whether it's just whether whether you want that sunset provision in there for three years like that or whether we don't. Well, three but years is the maximum amount of time correct. that uh, correct a. a strong fire chief can be appointed for and I don't 
see the select board necessarily changing its its pattern of annual appointments at this time. I'm, um, I'm just concerned so. as to what the discussion is going to be at town meeting tonight. You know, Bob is going to speak for it. The personnel yeah. committee well, can we, speak. Well, we, we, didn't, we didn't have the information from town we council didn't. yet because it was brought late into the process and we sent it down and we got it back and now we know and town council is saying at least at least get everything together before you adopt it and also did bring up the at will versus um, uh, for cause uh, status of, of the uh, employees. But so how will we talk about the fact that our recommendation is not New information came in. Really there. Your recommendation was made prior to town council's yeah, yeah. input. Now you have it and you'll recommend that we, you know, work on what it would look like and what the issues are and you know, come back in the spring with a with a, a new understanding of of the proposal. But so we would recommend, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure how to speak for the board. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, I could say that I, we would recommend that it be tabled at this point. But I, I don't know how you feel. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to like uh, to allow it to um, go forward just so that the discussion can take place so that next time um, it can be voted on without the discussion. Uh, yeah, so the, so the motion is still to make it happen, and then the discussion is we have this further information. Yeah, I don't think we were proposing moving to table right away. Okay. Do, do you think that the, the personnel committee might tape, make that motion? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, it's it's conceivable. They can make whatever motion they want. It, it's Anybody conceivable. Have? They 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 had they had the same concerns. And the, the, so the, the uh, a related concern too is you can make it so that the bylaws change for this one, and it sunsets at when the current chief's position expires. You can also do that. So that's a whole. I mean, because it's one thing to say that's that you hmm. want to. You want to change that benefit for this fire chief that we've had for 38 years as an at-will employee, mm -hmm. and you understand why. Yeah, after 38 years, you can say, "Okay, you you've, trust you, the guy. you've earned the right yeah. to be for cause guy." Um, but that that might. But, but it's not just him, of course. It's the entire department that would be for cause. That that's um, that's the understanding of the personnel committee. I don't know. Well, I would assume that he could make whatever personnel policies which he does now. He wants to make. Well, no, right now there are oh, yes, he would be legally entitled to personnel policies. Right, right. We we would we follow our town policies. And that would end. Right. And and there could be conflict with that. Um, you know, there's certainly the conflict with the personnel bylaw saying that the select board is the appointing authority. So so I hope we can have a good discussion, but town meeting doesn't always go the way that you want. I just, you know, you know that's every awesome. single person I've met today in town has been grouchy, grumpy, moaning about the weather. And I'm just thinking, man, this is of all, the, of all the nights to have this. Yeah. And I get in the car and on the radio on the way in here was a song that the person's over and over again saying, everybody I know is sick. That was the line to the song. I'm like it's, the, the, the Patriot song. I guess. But, I oh. guess, but <laughs> all the patriots are. Yeah. I guess I was like, you know what? That's today. That's kind okay. Of so, so we're not going to. We won't change anything. We'll try to have a good discussion. Uh, and at some point, either you or someone can. Okay. Move to table if that's the uh, if that's the consensus. Sure. Okay. Or move to make the vote explicitly advisory, with no legal effect. Can you do that as well? No. You either adopt it or you don't. I mean, I, I I would say you know we bring it back in the spring. I mean, that's the whole. Yeah. That's you know. Well, we do with the policy, the personnel committee. Yeah. They've got to make changes if we're going to do that. Oh yeah. So so under new business we have uh, we have signing certificates and 
Uh, but, the, the, but the certificates aren't um, the town academy certificates. Ready? They're not ready, so right. we'll table that. And uh, so we do have some stipend forms that we need to get signed. So I have a motion that we sign these stipends. A motion to sign Love these semi annual stipend forms for various town offices. Yes. So we have one here for Murph, George Murphy. We have one here for for me. I guess I don't sign that one. Uh, well, you, you can, can. You, yes, can you can, and you should. Okay, yes, one because, here for John O'Rourke, yeah. and one for you, and yes, very one good. for Joe Colucci. No, no picture of a dog on there, so why don't we we'll we'll sign these. Good. There's, uh, there's something called the rule of necessity, which says that if you... Uh, I should have been able to cut to the front of the burrito line for that rule, under that rule. <laughs> if there's only two select board members and there's something that's coming up that somebody should well, normally true. accuse themselves from, but they have to move the item of business, um, they can do so under that rule. So we're right down here now. Items not anticipated, 48 hours. Anybody have one? I have nothing. I think we're good. So, Tom, your update. Okay. <coughs> On committees, and here's a further discussion of this. The uh, personnel committee met Wednesday and discussed a number of things. Adding pre-employment pre physicals to the personnel policy, because they're a de, a de facto policy, we just didn't get them in. Applying pre-employment physicals to junior firefighters, which was a question from the fire chief. Reviewing the human resources items on the warrant. Assistant to the town administrator, pay and benefits. Assistant to boards, pay. The special town meeting article on the strong fire chief and human resources issues. And considering an overall policy for paid days off for snowstorms or whenever the town offices are closed. They agreed that junior firefighters should have pre-employment physicals. Mm -hmm. They approved of the increased pay for assistance and noted late-breaking information from town council advising against the strong fire chief article until the conflicting bylaw and personnel policy sections were ready to be changed as a package, which also includes deciding whether or not moving to um, for cause versus at will for some of the town staff would be appropriate. Uh, they left snow day pay as a policy issue for the select board to determine. Uh, and I hope to have something on that for you for next time. We've just had our only snowstorm, so. Yeah, we're good. Uh, pre employment physical is uh, a nicer way to put drug testing, is to say drug testing. Uh, we do not typically do drug testing in our pre employment physicals. Hmm. So uh, junior firefighters could just use their school. Though, though their fire, school. The firefighters are probably required to have drug testing. Not the high school kids. There's no way. Well, as a public the safety employee, they come under different rules. And there, there's another issue that there are two different kinds of physicals. And for regular firefighters, they're required to have a much more thorough and much more expensive physical. Uh, so I'm trying to sort through whether or not on-call firefighters have to have that as well. Moving on. Um, having the town election on December 12th has unfortunately displaced the monthly senior luncheon. Uh, if the votes are successful, though, it will mean the ability to go out to bid before the end of the year, which means we should get competitive prices submitted. So good for the town, unfortunately bad for the seniors this year. So has their meeting been moved anywhere? Or? Uh, they did not believe they could change the date mm. or place. Uh, in departmental news, the first snowstorm of the year was met by great work over many long hours by the highway crew who worked from Sunday afternoon till 3.30 on Monday and then again Tuesday all day. The fire department also had challenging work last Monday morning with a barn fire and did great work in very difficult conditions. 
Uh, I'm pleased to report that the Highway Department has received a grant of $5,000 to partially fund a second traffic sign, which will provide the capability of having signs at either end of Route 116 when work or other events are going on in town. What's partially funding? Uh, they cost $12,000. <gasps> uh, the grant is a risk management grant from Maya one of the best benefits of using that nonprofit MMA program geared to the needs of municipalities. So speaking of road work, is this project going to be the bridge open both directions for the rest of the winter? No. Oh, is it open for in both directions now? Yes. Yes, it's yes. It's open now. Yes. The, the work is suspended. Uh-huh. So so uh So it'll be coming back in the spring? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the final public meeting, oh, and there's, a, there's an announcement about this later as well, but just to mention as part of my report, the final public meeting for the revised hazard mitigation plan will be in one week on Monday, December 16th at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall. It should be complete and into the Federal Emergency Management Administration by the end of the calendar year, which was our original goal. And finally, Town Council has approved Nexamp's decommissioning agreement and bond. This is a requirement of the Planning Board. Uh, I'll have the agreement for you to sign at your next meeting. Great. Great. And awesome. yeah, so that's that's been on. Have a lot of discussion has gone on for that, and it's finally ready. So, after town meeting votes tonight, if if town meeting votes on the affirmative on this issue tonight, yes, on this the highway issue. No, no, that oh. Nexamp issue. Right. Um, Wait, uh, ta they, town, town meeting isn't voting, voting on this tonight. tonight. It's not in there? No. I thought it was to approve what we did. No. Uh, back in May, town meeting authorized the select board to negotiate any solar agreement okay. and, to, and to approve the, next, the particular NEXAMP agreement. So is this the last bit? It's like after this, yes. then, then it's... It's completely... Okay. Completely then we're just waiting set. on the DOER and yeah. state regulations. Mm -hmm. And that's it for me. Great. Concerns of the selectmen. Any concerns? Uh, went to the big arts and crafts fair at the grammar school on Sunday. Was very concerned at the lack of community support for that wonderful event. Mm. So. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anything came into us to put on the website. We have a little bit of mail. Um, so the, I don't notice these normally in the mail, but this is uh, the Conway is having a public hearing notice the Conway Planning Board on December 17th. Mm -hmm. So it's good for people to know. On? And, uh, and a, a site plan review on the Roaring Glen Farms LLC, a special permit. And that business is? Uh, so this is, as far as I know, this is a marijuana farm. Yes. Right? It's, so this is uh, the first... Pu oh, adult use recreational marijuana establishment. Yeah. So this is a public hearing on the first recreational marijuana establishment in the town, and it's on December seventeenth. December seventeenth. That's Wednesday, right? Uh, it doesn't say, but no, uh, this eighteenth is Wednesday. Oh, sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Seventeenth, mm -hmm. right? Because the party's the Thursday on the nineteenth. Uh, and it's at uh, seven p.m. in the general purpose room of Conway Town Hall, and F. Cat will be there to film it. I don't still have to see if we can or else I can borrow a camera like last time. Put that down. Great. Okay. So if, if people are interested to attend, uh, they could um, they could they could get a copy of their all of the permitting applications if they want to read through them at the town clerk's office. And the uh, is it the filled out application that's available or a blank application? Filled out. It says available online yes. at town website. Yes. Great. One more piece of mail. 
So Paul Mark and Natalie Blay are holding a census 2020 kickoff. And it's going to be on December 13th at 2.30 at the Senior Center in Shelburne Falls, 7 Main Street. So the census is conducted every 10 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's important that we all get counted. And uh, Representative Mark is chair of the redistricting committee. He is, yeah. Uh, it's looking like our population has dropped here in Western Mass which means it's important to our, get everyone counted. We all have to get counted. Our land area is going to grow slightly as we pick up our fair share of people. About, and uh, and the, the districts in Boston are going to get a little smaller, and we grow when that happens. Actually, the more important thing for people to be aware of is just to answer your door when they come. And, you know, they have badges, they have all these, like, you can tell who it is, just look through your peephole and answer the door. Yeah. And that um, they can't, you know, they can't refer anybody to any police for anything that they see. Um, but that, you know, if, if, if you don't answer the door and they don't have the information about your property, which can happen for a whole bunch of different reasons, they can walk around your house, look in the windows to see if the house is occupied to see whether it's worth spending government resources to come back over and over again and all this stuff. And so the, there's a whole lot of reasons why you want to answer the door. Um, I, in 2010, I was the Franklin County leader for the census. Good. Um, and Con Conway had a remarkable, like, 100% response rate. But, but you, they, we get a postcard, right? You can... Mo mostly. Yeah. But then the, there's a certain amount that at random gets gets tagged for a live visit mm. there's certain amount that based on gps readings and whatever that's it's, it's something's out of whack and they send people out um and then there's pro properties in the past that have differences between what people report and what people uh, are supposed to have and all this stuff so there's all kinds of goofy reasons they send people to your door um but yeah there there are neighboring towns some of them were notorious mm. and the amount of uh, resources that had to be devoted to like finding out like one place up some lonely dirt road that people were terrified to go up to because they would see bears in the woods every time and you can't you can't drive up there all this stuff so yeah it's hard to be a census worker I felt really bad so this is Paul Mark and Natalie Blay talking about the census so yeah. what's gonna happen dates it's gonna be it's in Children Falls at the Senior Center yeah. December 13th what day is December 13th? Friday. Friday, December 13th, 2.30. Yeah. And, and I assume everyone knows where the Shelburne Senior Center is. It's, it's kind of right over near the Shelburne Falls Post Office. It's sort of right next door to the yeah. post office. For now. For now? They're moving it? They're well, trying to. The Masonic Building is a strong favorite. Oh, okay. So that's the mail. Any announcements? There is one announcement over there that says announcement. Uh, announcement. Yes, there is. Town of Conway, multi-hazard mitigation plan draft available for review December 9th. So the Conway multi-hazard mitigation plan committee has prepared a draft of the 2020 multi-hazard mitigation plan ready for public review. It is on our website. A uh, public forum is going to be held on December 16th, 7 to 9 p.m. in the general purpose room. Uh, and we have a copy of the draft of, uh, uh, at townofconway.com slash forums and downloads. And if you look in there, you will see the multi-hazard mitigation plan. Great. Come to the public hearing. Oh, what are the, one other announcement is tomorrow night, the Historical Society has a wonderful speaker uh, two speakers at 7.30, and it's about the, to celebrate the anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. There's a retired Foreign Service officer that makes Conway his home that was born in East Berlin right before they built the wall and was posted to um, East Berlin as part of the Foreign Service when the wall came down and has wow. this whole, like, bookend. So so it's really a... It's gonna be what a time? That's at 7.30 tomorrow. 7.30. That's going to be a really good speaker. And, uh, of course, I have a Frontier School Committee meeting. I can't even... <laughs>
Maybe F Cat will be taping that too. Okay. Next meeting scheduled for Monday, December twenty third. So that's two weeks from today, right here, six o'clock. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion. So moved. Aye.